So for this question, we're asked to draw both the shear and moment diagrams for the simply supported beam. Now, given that the loading on this beam is pretty simple, we only have point loads and a couple, um, I would suggest that the graphical method is going to be the quickest and easiest way of drawing this diagram. So, to start off with, what I'm going to do is draw the free body diagram and find the reactions um, at the pin and at the roller. So, something like this. We have the two 10 kN forces and the couple. And we need to replace the roller with a vertical reaction force, which I'll call BY. And the pin has a horizontal and a vertical uh, reaction that we're going to draw in. And let me just quickly transfer over all these distances, which we're told are 2 meters. So, I need to work out AX, AY and BY. So I'm going to start by summing moments about point A to be equal to zero, one of our equilibrium equations. So AX and AY act through this point, so they're not going to be in the equation. We've then got the 10 kN force at a distance of 2 meters, and it's going to try and create a clockwise rotation, so it's negative. We've then got the 10 kN at a distance of 4 meters, again causing a clockwise rotation. We've got BY which is at a distance of 6, and it's going to try and rotate this thing anti-clockwise. And finally, we have the couple on the end, which is clockwise, so it goes in as negative 15. So rearranging this equation to solve for by, we end up with 12.5 kilonewtons. So I'll go over here and label it. All right, so now we need to work out ay, and we can get that by summing forces in the y direction to be equal to 0. So AY is going up, we've got two 10 Newton forces going down, and the 12.5 going up. So we find out that our reaction is 7.5 kilonewtons. Finally, if you sum forces in the X direction, the only thing that we've got is AX, so it's going to be zero. All right, so now we're at the point where we can start drawing the diagrams. And for the graphical method, we always want to start with the shear force diagram, and our units on it are going to be in kilonewtons. All right, so all we've got to do is try and follow the forces as we move along the beam. We know that these diagrams need to start and end at zero. So at the beginning, we're starting at zero, and immediately we're going to get pushed upwards 7.5 kilonewtons. As we move through here, nothing's happening, so it's going to remain flat. We then get pushed down 10. So 7.5 minus the 10 is going to take us to negative 2.5. We keep going across because there's nothing happening in here. And when we get to here, we push down another 10, which is going to take us to negative 12.5. Again, nothing's happening through this final section, so it remains flat. And we're then pushed back up to zero by this 12.5. Negative 12.5 plus 12.5 takes us back to zero. So that's our shear force diagram. So now we can move on to the bending moment diagram and the units for this one are going to be in kilonewton meters. All right. So this time for the bending moment diagram, we need to focus on the areas inside the shear force diagram, as well as any extra couples that we have. So we have this 15 uh, kilonewton meter couple on the end, which will be included in the diagram. So we'll start at the left hand side, and we've got no couples in this first bit, so all we're focusing on is the areas. So if we look at the area inside this rectangle here, it's going to be equal to the 7.5 multiplied by the 2 meters over which it applies and what we would expect is that it would cause a, a diagonal line on our bending moment diagram um, simply because as you take a step over each little, little bit you're adding a little bit more area every time and that's why it goes up up and up and up so we can work out the maximum value that it reaches it's going to be equal to the area which we said was 7.5 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 15 so the next little bit um, is this section in here, this rectangle. And 
This is now on the negative side of the shear force diagram. This is the negative side. So what we would expect is that it would pull down our bending moment diagram. Again, it's a flat line here. It results in a diagonal line when we move on to the bending moment diagram. This time it's downwards. And I would expect it to be, I don't know, we'll guess here. We can work out the number. It's going to be where we started, which was 15 minus the area inside this little bit, which is 2.5 times the width of two meters. And it works out to be 10, um, remembering the units are kilonewton meters. So we've then got to focus on this next section in here. And we can work out the area. It's going to be the 12, negative 12.5 multiplied by the two meters. And this one's actually going to try and pull us quite a far way down. We can work out the value again. It's going to be where we started, which was 10, minus the area in here. And it takes us to negative 15. So remember that all of these diagrams need to start and end at 0. So how we get back up um, to the 0 point is through this couple that we need to consider on the end. Now remember that I said in the recap video, um, if you have a couple that's drawn clockwise on your free body diagram, when you go to plot it on the bending moment diagram, it needs to be positive. Okay, opposite to what we have conventionally been doing. It only applies for plotting these diagrams. And go back and view that recap video if you want some clarification around why that happens. So this is going to be plotted as a positive value, so it means it's going to drag it straight back up. So negative 15 plus the 15 from the couple takes us back to zero. So that's this point on the end. So that's our bending moment diagram. Again, just to confirm, we start and end at zero. We start and end at zero for the shear force diagram, so that would suggest that they're correct. So that's all there is for this video, and see you in another one.